What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I posted and I wanted to do a couple follow-ups on a few things. Uh, it's been a little more than a month since I started my company, uh, 1980. Uh, link in the description below, but I have been vlogging uh, the business on a weekly basis, kind of following in on the footsteps of what Gary V is doing. And I wanted to show you my setup and how I'm doing it and what I've learned uh, doing this week must be vlog number five or six, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but it's about a week's worth of footage. I edit at the end of the week and I publish it out and usually it's on YouTube. Uh, that channel's pretty dead. But I'm gonna send a link for you to come over. I would love you to join me on that channel as well. Uh, it will be more on a professional basis. That's where you get a lot of the professional content. Uh, but on this channel, I'll continue to do kind of video and a random assortment of things. So my current setup, I am using the Fuji X-T3. The X-T4 came out. It has IBIS. It has all a flippy camera. It's the perfect camera. I have no money. I'm not going to buy it, at least until I get some more money in the door. Uh, Fuji X-T3 is mounted on a small rig. Uh, it's like a gimbal mount plate. This is used with the Zhiyun um, we will, we will Lab, um, but I don't carry the gimbal around with me all day, but I do like the plate because it gives me uh, just a space to kind of hold it um, in my hand like this. And there's a back mount plate where it has a bunch of quarter 20s. I can mount other things onto this as needed. But for the most part, I like using just this uh, plate as a way to hold it. Now when I'm recording stuff and I do need to set it on tripod, um, I tend not to bring tripods, but if I do, um, I'm carrying this little mini tabletop uh, Shirui. I can't pronounce this stuff, but uh, so check it out. It is fairly small. Um, let's see. Unlock it, and it folds up like this. So fairly small. It goes in my bag. Uh, Arca Swiss mount with a ball head so I can reposition things around. Um, I think you can remove this column, which I am thinking about doing that just because it's a little hot top heavy when I got my camera mounted on it. Uh, but for the most part, it is a pretty decent um, tripod. So I use that to record as well. Um, on my other setup, on, on this setup, I have, I went with the 16 millimeter F14 mounted on this because I like the angle of view. Um, I have to hold it fairly far out to kind of capture it because it's a 24 millimeter equivalent. And so at this length, I can hold it somewhat comfortably um, and still vlog with it. It is shaky. It's an unstabilized lens. And so with an unstabilized body, somebody send me an X-T4. Um, so that's the setup there. I went out and got a KNF um, ND filter, a variable ND filter. Um, I have the Peter McKinnon uh, higher end Polar Pro version for my other lens, but um, I didn't. I decided not to use step up rings, and I wanted this permanently mount on. And so I like it has that these little metal knobs, so it allows me to make the adjustments on the fly. I have been using an ND filter because I want to keep that shallow depth of field, um, just that blurry background. And so I am using a variable ND filter, particularly as it's getting brighter and brighter outside. I live in Seattle. So sun is actually out today. Uh, mounted on the top is the Rode Wireless Go. Um, I went with this option because it is um, on a smaller end. Uh, it's powered by USB-C and it plugs into the headphone jack. I do have, and I've used it for corporate work, uh, the Sennheiser G3. So a more production uh, quality wireless mic. Uh, they do have um, an, a new version that just came out. Uh, I don't have it, but it works pretty well. Uh, this is actually a really, really good mic. Unfortunately, it's fairly big, and if I'm vlogging with it, it's quite uh, obnoxiously big to carry around. And so I do like the wireless go. Um, I just got the lav mic that plugs into this, or the, the wired lav, and so I will plug it into the jack here, and then permanently just have it attached to my, my jacket as I'm walking around day to day. I like to just keep this mounted um, on myself because you never know when a shot comes up or when an opportunity to do something comes up. And so I like the equipment on myself as opposed to just having it put away and then setting up each and every time. Now, the only problem is these batteries last um, about three hours, uh, barely four, I think, if I just leave it running. And so you do have a limitation of battery life. 
and I'm finding that my camera needs a USB-C to charge. Uh, these two devices need USB-C to charge, and so now I'm up to three things that need to be charged on a daily basis. Uh, so somewhat kind of a pain. Now, I was using this camera um, as my B-roll camera to record, and I continue to do some of that in for B-roll, uh, but I have switched over to the Insta360 ONE-R. Recently got this one, 360 camera. I sold my Insta360 ONE-X and my DJI Osmo Pocket and settled on this as my camera. Um, I like this because it has a couple cool um, gimmicky uh, AI editing tools to to do time lapses, uh, hyper lapses, and um, a couple other things. And so I do record in 360, walking around, it captures and it acts as the B-roll or transition video between my talking head. Uh, a lot of my videos lately have, or on the vlogging side, have just been me talking to the camera. I would like moving forward to get to more of a showing as opposed to simply talking. And so same with this channel as well. I'd like to show you how I do some of this. Unfortunately, that requires quite a bit of setup and a lot of time and then I props out to the YouTubers that are able to do that. This is just a side hustle and side hobby. Uh, a few thoughts on the Insta360 ONE R. Um, it's buggy. Uh, I was not expecting the software and the firmware to be this buggy. Um, it's slow to turn on, slow to turn off. Um, just a few things like just that were a little gimmicky. I do like the concept that's modular. Like I hope at one point in the future I can replace things out. I am hoping at one point once they release it to get the VR 180, so you have the two cameras facing this direction, because uh, I do, do want to do more VR uh, 180 content as opposed to 360 content. Uh, it's 360 for me, it's less useful because I think people are less likely to consume it, and usually I'm doing talking head video, so it'd be cool to have a, a 360, 180 degree view of it, and you can see it go there. Uh, quick other things. This is my uh, studio setup. It is coming together. It is insanely crazy. A little too much. I'm not a professional YouTuber. And so I got um, the sound absorbing foam up here. I got panels right over here in front of me. I am hoping to one day get an Aperture 120D a professional dome light. Um, but right now I'm using a small Rotolite Mini behind just a little filter. And uh, earlier, if you go to my other channel, I have been doing whiteboarding videos, and so this is my whiteboard setup. I'll take this camera and move it over here and point and shoot into that uh, video there. So hey, thank you for joining. This is my latest vlogging setup. Let me know how you vlog, like, how do you get things going faster. Um, a lot of the professional YouTubers out there are doing high production, high quality, and my vlogs are getting there, and I'm, I can see definitely the progression to getting better and better at it. Um, for now, I'm trying to build into my workflow and create a habit, at least to record on a weekly basis over at the 1980 channel. So link in the description below. Do check it out. I appreciate a subscriber. Uh, I'd like to get to 100 so I can get the uh, vanity URL for it. Until then, thanks for coming to my channel.